Check, check, check. Oh. Good morning. Welcome to Grace Bible Church. We're uh, super glad that you are here. And um, we're really excited to be out here in our courtyard space with the beautiful weather. So we're excited for this morning and we want to worship and sing together. Just a couple of housekeeping things since we are outside. This way is how you'll get to the bathrooms. Our bathrooms are on the, um, the, the hall down here. If you know, um, if you've been here, you know that. And then just try to avoid too much movement. I know there's still people coming in. That's okay, because we love our kids. Our kids' ministry is running just as strong this morning. They're going to be in the gym, in the student center over there, and kind of down the halls in these classrooms here. So this morning, it's a bit of a competition, a noise competition. If we can be louder than them, then they are uh, to us, you know, because they have a lot of fun. So we love our kids and families and students here. They're going to have an exciting morning as always. Um, and then last but not least, our Connect uh, tent, or Easy Up, is right over there. And Betsy Newell mans that tent well, and she wants to say hi to you if you're new with our church. And if you are new with our church, we really encourage you to get connected. We want to meet you. We want to get you plugged in. And make sure you know those steps to get more connected to what's going on here. But can we stand together? We're going to sing um, this morning some hymns. We're going to sing some, some songs and some worship choruses just to give... God, our hearts as his people this morning, we want to sing it out loud and strong and again, just be, um, be in awe of who God is as we're out here kind of in his creation and um, the awesome space that we have here. Let's sing together.
so we've been playing this song, Rest On Us, for a couple weeks, um, for a while now. And uh, we've just been loving it because it's, it's talking about what we want the Spirit to do. We love the Spirit moving in this place, not only in our worship services, but um, in our lives as well. So as you, as you keep learning this song, would you sing it with us and, and recognize the Spirit moving in this place? I'm here. 
us one more time. Come down, spirit, when you move, you make my heart feel. When you feel the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will feel me. Come down, spirit, when you move, you make my heart feel. When you feel the room. So you got new seats, new places before you take a seat this morning. Take a moment, just say hi to somebody. Uh, find somebody new to say hi to this morning. Welcome to the courtyard.
Welcome, Grace Bible Church, to our outdoor service. Hey, we have a lot of seats up here in the front, and if you're able to scoot in a little bit, that would be really helpful. We have folks looking for places to sit. So we got a bunch of seats up here, good seats. Um, but yeah, scoot in if you would. My name is Ben. I'm one of our pastors here, and it is good to be together. Amen? We're singing Joy in the House of the Lord, obviously. We are in the house of the Lord because we're with one another, and we are the house of the Lord. So there's joy in us, there's joy in the house of the Lord, even though we are outdoors. And the reason we're here today outdoors um, is just because we felt like we wanted to mix it up, and we built this awesome courtyard through your generosity, through the leadership of our elders, F. King. Yes. So we're hoping to do this more often. It's good family vibe. You're going to hear the kids playing and running around, and that's okay. It's good because we're with one another. This Thursday, for those of uh, for the ladies, if you want to get to know uh, Grace Bible Church more, you want to get to know Betsy and the women's ministry, she's going to be having a lunch out here. Um, uh, you bring your own lunch, but if you want to get to know Betsy noon this Thursday, talk to her at the table back there. Uh, but, yeah, we'd love to get to know you and get you connected here at Grace Bible Church. Uh, we're going to take a moment and we're going to pray because next week at this time, we have 190 students going to Hume Lake. So yes, any students out there going to Hume? All right, we've got a couple of you. We've got some upstairs, junior hires right now. Um, we have about 30 adult leaders going as well. Uh, Eric, our new youth pastor. Stand up, Eric. Would you stand up? Be praying for Eric all next week. You know what his face looks like now. Um, we also have a family pastor named Ed Boness. He's driving up today. He starts work tomorrow. So we have, I'm going to use this mic. Can you hear me? I'll use this mic. There. Can you hear me? How's that? Okay. Yeah, we have 190 students. New leadership teams. We have stacked the box with some great leaders because we care about this next generation. This church always has, always will. And we look at the world that they're growing up in, the world that we live in, and we know that the hope for this generation is Jesus. And so they're going up to Hume Lake, and we're praying for God to do miracles. We're praying that he would meet students exactly where they're at. Uh, we're praying for good spirit. We're praying that the Holy Spirit would move, and we're praying that our leaders would know how best to minister to the students, and they themselves would also fall more deeply in love with Jesus and the goodness of his plan for us. So we're going to take a minute, we're going to pray, and we're going to continue our worship service as we open the word. Let's pray. Father, we are so grateful that you're consistent and good. This world is yours, all of us in it, Lord. And we turn our hearts and our ears to you no matter where we're at, no matter what we're going through, no matter whether we've been engaged with you all week or this is the first time we've even turned our eyes and our ears to you, Lord. We thank you that you are consistent faithful and always at work. So Father, we lift up this morning our students. We lift up these 190 students going up next week to Hume Lake. We know that it's just a place, but it's a place that you have put your spirit upon. We know that it's a special place and a special time for students to turn off the phones and get away from distractions and seek you and pay attention to what you're doing in their lives. So Lord, would you be softening hearts right now? Would you be opening minds and ears to hear your word, to hear your goodness, to hear the truth about who you are? We pray for safety. We pray for logistics. We know there's a lot of work. It's a lot of money. We thank you for 
this church has been so generous to send these students to camp. Lord, we couldn't do it without the generosity of your people. And we thank you that you're a generous father. So, Father, do what you will. And today, as we open your word, we ask, God, that you would not just we wouldn't just be more informed about who you are, Lord, but that we would know you more, we would love you more, we would trust you more. And all glory and honor to you, and thank you for this awesome place to worship you. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Yo, baby. Well, there are some, um, there are some uh, babies worshiping. Uh, can you hear them worshiping, singing to God? They just love the Lord in there. Awesome. Can you guys believe where we're sitting? I mean, I, I hope it's not lost on you how awesome uh, this, this is. I, I heard from a friend of mine this morning from Tyler, Texas. And he said, hey, from Tyler, it's swelteringly hot here. And I said, I'm sorry about that. It's going to be a high of 70, and we're having church outside this morning. So God bless you. Um, hope it works out. I want to come alongside Pastor Ben and mention my gratitude to you for making Hume possible for what is a record number of students for us. 190 kids, 30 staff are headed there, not just for a week of fun. It'll be a lot of fun, but the hope is that Jesus completely overwhelms these students with his love and passion for them. Because I don't know that I need to tell you that it is tough to be a teenager today. I think I say that every year, and it's getting harder and harder and so please be praying for them. Thank you for your generosity to make this possible for them. I think Hume was over $800 per camper this year. And, and we have a generous church that made it possible for all of our students to get some form of a scholarship and help. And we didn't have, money was not an issue. If a kid wanted to go, we made it happen for him. So thank you for, for that and keep that up. It is a different world today than the one many of us remember as kids. And 1932, a British philosopher and author named Aldous Huxley wrote a fictional tale called A Brave New World. It was a novel about a futuristic world where people were engineered into an intelligence-based hierarchy conditioned through reproductive technology and psychological manipulation to act as they were programmed. And it was supposed to be something completely different than anything that they could have imagined. So the, the book is over, you finish the book and you go back to your life as usual. None of those things are any part of your, your life. And then we go almost 100 years later, we realize that we are living now in a brave new world. In case you haven't noticed, through technology and human development, the world is kind of a crazy place. <laughs> Lots of crazy things are happening today. There's a renewed fascination these days with extraterrestrials. Were you aware of this? That there's been pictures and they're on mainstream news outlets. That there's these, these things we can't identify. And are they coming for us? And there's certain conspiracy kind of people that really get freaked out by these things. And, and uh, are we, are we going to get taken up or taken away or changed? There's a new thing called the metaverse. It's a takeoff on the word universe. It's not one, it's many. And the metaverse, to put it simply, is a space where humans can participate in a shared virtual universe, a universe that doesn't physically exist, but you can visit. Did you know that you can buy, literally pay money to own real estate in the metaverse? It doesn't exist, and you can buy it, and you can sell it for more than you bought it for in the virtual world. Digital realms, bots. A bot is a short for robot or internet bot. It's a computer program that operates as an agent for a user to simulate human activity. Bots are normally used to automate certain tasks, meaning they can run without specific instructions from humans, like they can drive your car for you. That's kind of a strange new deal. You can be going to work reading a book while your car takes you to the office. Another thing we've seen in the world today is this thing called artificial intelligence. It's a branch of computer sciences that emphasizes the development of, in, of intelligent machines that think and work like humans. For example, speech recognition, problem solving, learning and planning. All artificial. And it makes you wonder, where's all this headed? 
on top of what's happening with the way we identify sexuality today, and, and there are hundreds of genders available now to pick from, and, and all this stuff is all circulating now, and we're confronted with it all the time. And there's a part of us that might go, am I going to be able to navigate this world as it moves forward? How am I going to find my place as a follower of Jesus in this strange metaverse that circles me every day? What about Siri? Let's bring it close to home. Siri actually, we are told, can listen to us. She's this really very unconfrontative little voice that will call, make your calls and help you get to grandma's house and all these things. But a friend of mine told me the other day he was having a conversation with his neighbor about needing to buy a new mattress. And when he got home, he went on Facebook and all of a sudden there were slews of mattress advertisements on his phone. And it was like, whoa, what's going on? Algorithms that predict and manipulate human behavior. The reason why I'm talking about this this morning is I want to tell you from the text that we're going to look at this morning as we wrap up Romans 8 is that God transcends all of this. God is above it. He's around it. He's under it. And he's going to communicate to us today, if we have ears to listen, that there's no experience, there's no technology, there's no threat of force, there's no future unnamed enemy going to come and have any success in separating us from the love that God has for us, for his purposes, for our lives. And I hope that will encourage you as we face this, this brave new world that's around us right now. So along with the the screams, would you turn with me to Romans chapter 8, verse 37. We're going to finish up the This is Living series today, and uh, we're going to be encouraged, I hope, with the idea that we are beyond conquerors because we follow Jesus, and no matter what comes, we'll be ready. I can summarize Romans 8 really in two words, security and endurance. That we have security because of what God has made possible for us over and against any potential threat, and we can endure anything. That's what Romans 8's about. No condemnation, life in the Spirit, it provides security. But there's going to come a time of suffering. Our hearts are challenged. And with our suffering comes ultimate glory. And in that suffering, in Romans chapter 8, verses 19 through 25, we learned that we will endure because of who we name, and his name is Jesus. To bring all this to a close, all to a head, in the last three verses of Romans 8, Paul makes these cataclysmic declarations that I hope you and I will take to heart this morning. We'll begin in Romans chapter 8, verse 37. Under the banner of security and endurance, the Apostle Paul says, Now, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. We are more than conquerors through Christ. That these things is in reference to verse 35. All the challenges that come, like tribulation and distress and persecution and famine and nakedness and danger and sword, none of these things will succeed in separating us from God, but we'll face all of them, and it will feel like we're being separated. It's going to feel like, God, why are you allowing this? God, where are you? If the aliens do come and take us all away, we're going to say, God, what are you doing? Paul says that we, in all of these challenges, need to remember that we are more than conquerors. We're not just people who conquer. He's saying we are beyond that. We're more than conquerors. The Greek is huperinikomen. Huperinikomen. Nikomen is to be victorious. The root is Nike. And I know many of you wear Nike shoes for the sole reason that they declare to you and to your friends that you are more than a conqueror through Christ. That's why you buy those shoes. I know it. I don't even have to ask you. But he says here that we are huper nikomen. We are, it's an intensifying of the victory. We're beyond victorious. What does that mean? 
It's not just defeating those things listed in verse 35. We don't just survive tribulation. We don't just make it through distress or persecution. We soar over it as more than conquerors. Here's how John Piper puts the meaning of what it means to be more than a hooper nikomen conqueror. He says a conqueror defeats his enemy, but one who is more than a conqueror subjugates his enemy. A conqueror nullifies the purpose of his enemy, but one who is more than a conqueror makes the enemy serve his own purposes. A conqueror strikes down his foe, but one who is more than a conqueror makes his foe his slave. What he's saying is the very things that want to destroy your soul and take you out, God uses not only to see you through them, but to make you more dependent, more enabled, more passionate, more more committed to the purposes of the kingdom of God, willing to take risks and go places where most people don't go. It's Romans 8, 28, that all the things that happen to us, God turns into our good. Can you imagine, I mentioned this last Sunday, being the devil, whose mission is clear from Jesus to steal, kill, destroy. And his attempts to steal from you, to kill you, to destroy you, God uses as fodder for making you more dependent and more in love with him. They turn into your good. Can you imagine how frustrating that would be if you're the devil? It's Numbers 22, and and, and the prophet Balaam was hired by the king of Moab to curse the people of God. Tons of money given. He went, goes out that morning to curse God's people, and out of his mouth comes blessing. The king of Moab said, wait a minute. I paid you to curse them, not to bless them. He's like, I know. I'm sorry. I don't know what happened. It'll be better tomorrow. Goes back out tomorrow. He speaks, not cursing, blessing. How frustrating that must have been. This is what God does with these things that want to, to take us out. They make us better. And I think that's what Paul means when he calls us these these more than conquerors. And it's all through Christ who loves us. Think about persecution with me as an example of being more than a conqueror. Persecution is the, the, the killing and harassing of believers to stop the movement of the gospel. These devil-filled rulers from the first century, these Pharisees and and Caesars and Nero, they didn't like the idea that people were giving their allegiance to a foreign king named Jesus. So let's take them out. Let's kill them. Let's imprison them. Let's tell them, do not talk about this. Let's put this kibosh on this movement. And the more they pressed, the more this thing spread. And it went from Jerusalem in persecution to Judea, to Samaria, and to the other most parts of the earth. In the places where Jesus is not to be mentioned are the places where his church is the strongest. The devil tries to kill, steal, destroy. But God has superintended a process because of our faith and the Spirit's intervention and a lack of condemnation to make us more than conquerors in those challenges if we can see it, if we can choose it. Paul goes on in verse 38 and 39 to give another list of things that they might be tempted to think, well, there are limits to how close we can hang to God's love. It's got to run out at some point and to make sure they don't believe that, he gives them yet another list He says in verse 38, for I am certain of this, or I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, or any other thing in all the creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Paul gives us He gives us four little partnerships or or words that are in connection, and there were two that he handles independently. The first 
group or pair he gives us is death nor life. Neither death nor life shall separate you from the love of God. Why does Paul begin with death? Because death is the one thing most people are afraid of. And not even the elimination of your ability to live in this world can take you away from God's purposes. In verse 36, he just told them that for your sake we're being killed all day long, regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. If you are passionate in love with Jesus to follow his kingdom and calling on your life, your life might be taken in this world. 2021, almost 100,000 believers died martyrs' deaths. Today, it continues to happen. It happens every few minutes. And because we're more than conquerors, not only does death not separate us from God, the Bible tells us it actually, it, it moves us into the presence of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 5 to be absent from the body is to be home with the Lord. Knowing that can give someone a passion for me to live as Christ, to die as gain, Paul told us in Philippians. He's being threatened with death. Did he cower in fear? Was he nervous? No. He says, look, if you kill me, I go be with Jesus. That's fantastic. I'd love that. If you don't, then I lead you to Christ. So whatever you want, it's up to you. I'm good. That's a more than a conqueror kind of attitude. Death can't take us out, nor can life. Think of all the things that life throws at us. What is life throwing at you right now? I know there's a list of things you wish you could change, people you wish you could change, challenges we all face, things we need God's help in, the things we hear from Loved ones from doctors, from politicians that make our hearts flutter. There's nothing in this life that can separate us from the love of God in Christ. And that love is not a fleeting feeling. That love is security and the power to endure. This is where our, our faith meets the streets. The second pair is, in the text, is angels or rulers. I'm even going to include powers there at the end of verse 37 because I think Paul includes powers as its own thing, maybe because he wanted to mention it and wanted to put it with the rulers but forgot, and so he told, the, he told the guy that was writing it down, just put that in there too. He's referring to cosmic forces, demons, angels, with power, with the ability to impact people's lives. Demons. They are as real as I'm standing before you. It's a reality in this world. And there's a cosmic battle happening over our lives, happening over this gathering, even right now. And none of those forces can separate you from the love of God. None of them. Because you're more than a conqueror. Colossians chapter 2, verse 15, he disarmed the rulers and authorities and put them to open shame <laughs> by triumphing over them in him. They've been exposed. If all the powers of hell were to show up at your door this afternoon, all of them breathing their threats and, and fireballs and whatever they've got, you know what you do? This is what you do. That's it. That's all you got. You gotta come with more than that. Because my Bible says that you've been subjected to open shame. You've been exposed. You got no place with me. I belong to Jesus more than a conqueror. If they all show up, not even that experience can separate you from God's love, from God's purpose, from God's statement of security and endurance over your life. Can you see why he would want this to be the way this text ends? Can you see why this is why Romans 8 ends? Because it is the pinnacle of the experience of a believer that needs to make this decision. Notice it says in verse 37 or verse 38, this is a decision I've made. I am certain of this. 
The reason why I'm certain is because I'm tempted to believe that I am separated from God's love because of how hard my life is. But we know different. We understand. That's why our minds must be transformed. We'll get there in Romans chapter 12. I love what this hymn says. The prince of darkness grim, we tremble not for him. His rage we can endure, for lo, his doom is sure. Do you believe it? Have you made that decision? I have decided, I have made the decision. I am certain that death, life, all the cosmic powers of the universe, spiritual, angels, rulers, demons, powers, they cannot defeat me because I am in Christ. The third pair are things present, nor things to come. Maybe there are believers in this church and I'm thinking, well, that's all great, but my present circumstances seem impossible. And maybe right now you're walking through the fire in your life, in your marriage, with some people that you love. And the message to your heart this morning is that not even that present pain can separate you from the purposes of God inside that pain. Because God's gonna turn it for your good to make you more like Christ. You have to choose that. And he mentions things to come. Maybe the present pain is, is, is even worse because the future feels so insanely insecure, so out of bounds. But not even those things in the future, whatever they might be, can distract God's purposes in your life to make you more than a conqueror, to give you a vision. You can rise above these things. Didn't Paul say over and over again in Romans 8, those he justified, he rescued from their sin, he's going to glorify, meaning you're gonna get there. You're gonna realize it was all worth it because we hung on, because we made this decision, because I am certain that these things can't defeat me because of Christ. And the last thing he says here is, is nor anything else at all the creation. He's probably, you can imagine him going, what, what, how can I summarize all of this? Basically anything that's not God can't separate you from God. So have fun thinking of all the scenarios of things you could imagine happening to you. Those things don't work. You may be tempted to say, I don't know if I can make this. Well, the Bible does tell us in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 that there's no temptation that has overcome us that's not common, that, that we can see a way of escape and endure through it. Now, how many of you have ever thought to yourself, and be honest, that verse can't be true, because I have. It can't be true, because I'm saying to myself, I don't think in any way, shape, or form I can, I can make it through this, God. That, that verse is wrong. But here's the thing, who decides what I can and can't handle? I wish it was different, but it's not me. He decides. And he gives us his power to endure when we make this cognitive choice that nothing, and I don't care what it is, anything that's not God can't separate me from his love in Christ Jesus our Lord. The mission is for you to decide on security and endurance. People who are secure, they thrive. They make good choices. They live in vital relationships because they know that God's with them, that he's animating this relationship to his purposes. I can make it through a challenging time in my marriage. I can believe God to save my kids. I can believe God to work through all the calamity of our culture for the purposes of the gospel. And people are more open to faith today than they ever have been. It's an open door for more than conquerors to walk through. 
So whether it's cars that drive themselves or artificial intelligence or the aliens are coming or whatever you want to go with, if Siri advertises things because she's listening to my conversations or if someone's snooping, whatever it is, let it all happen. Because I'm more than a conqueror. God is beyond all these things. He transcends them. But here's the thing that Paul says, you have to decide. Do you believe that? Are you certain of it? If you were to sit down, would you record these things? Here is what I'm certain of. If you can answer that in the affirmative, affirming and agreeing with Paul, you're gonna soar. And you'll hear God say, well done. That's why I put those words to that text for you to be more than a conqueror. A lot of defeated believers in the world today, a lot of people uncertain about a whole lot of things, but when it comes to what we understand about God and our victory in him, we can't be uncertain. And so preach that message to yourself as often as you think of it. And our church will soar as a whole bunch of conquerors live that story out. Father, thank you for this gathering. I'm just, I'm blown away by what this text is trying to teach us. I, I wanna believe it more and more. Give us faith to see it. There are people in this room who feel defeated. I know for a certainty that that's true. So God, as you only can reach down from your throne and bring those people to their feet to make this choice to wear the label of a conqueror, Help them see how the, the arrows that come to destroy and steal and kill, you wanna transform into things that make us better, stronger, more like Christ. Give us a vision for who you want us to be, how you want us to live. For we are certain of this, that neither death nor life nor angels or rulers, nor things present or to come, nor powers, nor any height or any depth or any piece of this creation will ever be successful separating us from you. It can't happen. I pray that doesn't just inspire us to have a countenance of joy and passion, but God, give it, help it create boldness and even risk-taking faith to believe you, to believe on you for miracles, to see people reached and transformed by the gospel. And may our church be a place that is a bastion for, for victors who live and act like they're more than conquerors. I ask this by the power of your spirit, in Jesus' name, and all God's people said, amen. Let's stand together and respond to God's word. This victory we stand in, assurance we have, and God's unending love and grace for, for all of us here.
Sing with us, I was buried. I was buried beneath my shame. He's got the, the outfit of a conqueror, and of course, that's where all that great singing came from. So, hey, it's been an awesome, awesome morning to be the people of God gathered together. And if you brought a, a need this morning, we want to be a church committed to what it might look like for the service to end, but the ministry doesn't stop. And so our prayer team friends are headed to the sides right now, and they're here to pray with you to believe God for you. If you have a need for a child, you have a health issue, a financial need, 
Maybe you're not a follower of Jesus today. You're here checking this thing out, and they'd love to share with you what it means to know Jesus, what he's done in their lives. Even if you just want God to bless your family, have them come. Come to them and let them bless you. They'll be available this morning after the service is over. We're grateful that you're here. And each week we end our service in blessing. It's from Luke chapter 24 where Jesus raised his hands and blessed his followers as they parted. And so we live in the, the wake of that blessing even to this day. And we slap our hands together because we really, really want it. So I want you to do that together on the count of three. Ready? One, two, three. Yes. I bless you with this truth. Whether you have Nikes on or not, you are more than a conqueror because you've decided that nothing can separate you from Christ. Put your challenges up and against who he is and live a victorious life. Make that choice and may it bless you and all those around you. Now pack that blessing up, put it in your heart where it's needed. God bless you guys, hang around. There are fat-free donuts to be consumed. Welcome somebody you don't know. Come for prayer. We'll see you next week. God bless you. Have a great Sunday.
darkness you're the fire a holy flame for all to see and in my heart you reign forever my mind 
to Calvary where Jesus bled and died for me. I see his wounds, his hands, his feet, my Savior on that cursed tree. Drenched in tears, they laid him down in Joseph's tomb. The ancient seal by heavy stone, Messiah still and all
darkness tries to roll over my bones When sorrow comes to steal the joy I own When brokenness and pain is all I know Oh, I won't be shaken No, I won't be shaken My fear doesn't stand a chance
satisfies like you do the fountain that won't run dry nothing satisfies like you do